Hello and welcome to the lab videos for Government 300. My name is Aaron Stubland and I'll be your guide throughout these lab videos. Together we'll explore how to use SPSS to do data analysis in political science. Today's lab video will introduce you to SPSS or Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. Just like its name implies, SPSS is a statistical analysis program for social scientists. Learning SPSS can really benefit you in the long run, as it's used by many organizations and government agencies to analyze and present data. So let's get started. Within your VCL session, you should see a SPSS icon on your desktop. Double-click this icon to open up a session of SPSS. And SPSS will prompt you to either type in or open up existing data. Uh, for now, let's just choose Type In Data and click OK. And this should bring you to a blank spreadsheet. Blank because we've chosen to input our own data. This spreadsheet, like any you'd see in Excel, for instance, is organized into rows and columns. And you'll notice that the SPSS interface looks a lot like any Windows application. For instance, your main menu on top features common menu items such as File, Edit, and View. For the labs in this course, we will most commonly use the three menu items Transform to recode our variables, Analyze to run techniques on our variables or relationships, and then Graphs to graph our relationships or variables. In the bottom left-hand corner, there are two buttons, Variable View and Data View. First, Variable View lists each of your variables and the properties of that variable. For instance, if you were building a survey that asked the height, gender, and age of respondents, you would input and define these variables here. So for instance, click in the cell and quickly enter height and age and gender. Once you've defined variables in Variable View, switch over to Data View. Data View now shows the variables as columns, and cases, or observations, as rows. The important distinction here is between variables and cases. Cases are your observations, so for a survey this would be each respondent, for instance, and variables are the characteristics or attributes they have, in our case height age, and gender. Notice the three variables we just created are now listed in the columns. The cases, or observations, comprise the rows in the data set now. This is where you would enter in new data from each of your observations. In our case, each respondent's height, gender, and age. Now that we have the basics of SPSS down, let's open up one of the data sets from the Pollock workbook. So close out of your SPSS session. and open your browser and navigate to the Blackboard course webpage for Government 300. And along the left-hand menu, choose Data. So this opens up links to both full data sets and the student versions of the Pollock data sets. And the only difference here is the student versions have fewer than 1,500 variables and fewer observations as well. We'll mostly be accessing data in SPSS for, the for these labs by going through the Blackboard course webpage within your VCL session and then opening up whatever data set we'll need for that lab. For now, click on NES 2008, the National Election Study of 2008. And you'll be prompted to either open or save and click open. and SPSS will open this data set. And SPSS will open the data set in Data View. It is now fully populated with all the individuals surveyed in the 2008 National Election Study. Each case or observation is a person who is polled, for instance, and each variable represents either the respondent's answer to a particular question or a characteristic observed by the interviewer. Now switch over to Variable View using the tabs at the bottom left. 
Recall that the variable view allows you to view or edit the variables to alter the characteristics, names, and labels of your variables. I want to draw your attention to just a handful of ways to edit your variables. So the names column is simply the name of your variable in the data set. And these should be relatively short and simple, although explanatory. And they cannot contain any spaces. The labels in your data set explain in more detail what the variable is. So in the case of age, for instance, the label would simply be age of respondent. Finally, the values column defines what numbers correspond to what real-world concepts. It is important to note that computers speak in the language of numbers, which in the case of age is intuitive. A number corresponds to an actual respondent's age. But if you were to select the gender variable, so scroll down here to look at the gender variable, you will see that one corresponds to male and two corresponds to female. Computers will not be concerned about what the numbers mean. That's a job for people. So knowing what values or category labels correspond to what numbers is very important. So to demonstrate what we've just talked about, let's create and define a variable in SPSS. So go to File, and then New, and slide over to Data. And this will open a blank spreadsheet. So if you go to Variable View, in your top left cell under Name, just click inside that cell. So suppose we want to create a variable that measures party identification. So under Name, enter Party ID. Remember that no spaces are allowed here. Now simply work across the row and in the label category, simply put ours political identification. So that's the long form of our name. It's a little bit more descriptive and then define values for the new variable you've created. So party identification is typically measured on a scale ranging from Demo Democrat to Republican. Independents are generally included at the midpoint of the scale, so assign category values to the numbers in SPSS. So in this case, we'll do the value of one corresponding to the label Democrat, and go down and select Add. And the category 2 will correspond to independent. Click on Add. And our third and final category will be Republican. Click on OK. And you're set. Now return to data view. The newly created variable will now appear on the left column. Now you can imagine populating this variable with observations. Don't worry if this seems like a new language. Next week we'll build on this knowledge by taking a survey and entering the data from that survey into SPSS. Before beginning the next lab video, be sure to complete the survey available on the Blackboard site. Then, move on to the lab video featuring the entering of data in SPSS.